Now the last point I just want to make uh, before we break for lunch is um, just this issue of uh, women keeping silence in church. I just want to touch on this and just clarify a few things. Now in 1 Corinthians 14, we read here in verse 26, How is it then, brethren, when you come together, every one of you hath a psalm, hath a doctrine, hath a tongue, hath a revelation, hath an interpretation. Let all things be done unto edifying. If any man speak in an unknown tongue, let it be by two, or the most by three, and that by course, and let one interpret. But if there be no interpreter, let him keep silence in the church, and let him speak to himself and to God. Let the prophets speak two or three, and let the other judge. If anything be revealed to, one, to, to another that sitteth by, let the first hold his peace, that ye may all prophesy one by one, and that all may learn, and all may be comforted. And the spirits of the prophets are subject to the prophets, for God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all churches of the saints. Let your women keep silence in the churches, for it is not permitted unto them to speak, but they are commanded to be under obedience, as also saith the law. So just touching on what we were covering before, they are commanded to be in subjection to an authority. But if they will learn anything, let them ask their husbands at home, for it is a shame for women to speak in the church. Now, this is often a controversial passage because people say, oh, you know, do Christians believe that women should just go to church and shut their mouth and they can't say anything while they're at church and just be this silent ornament of a meek and quiet spirit? Um, you know, no, I don't believe this is what this verse is teaching. And if you see the, um, the context of this passage, it's talking about the time of teaching in the church. Because number one, remember we, we talked about last week that the church is not the building. So this, this house here that I live in is not, not a church. So when a woman enters this house, it's not saying that a woman needs to keep silent in this building. Um, the church is obviously this gathering here when we gather together and assemble as one body. Um, but is it even saying that a woman needs to be silent during the whole gathering, during, during the whole church gathering? No, it's just saying that she has to be silent during the preaching. So she learns in silence as we see in Timothy. And I just want to show you that, that, that um, context here. Look, how is it then, brethren, when ye come together, every one of you hath a psalm, hath a doctrine, hath a tongue, hath a revelation, hath an interpretation. So what's happening here? They're teaching each other, right? They're teaching each other doctrine. They're maybe speaking in different languages. They have a psalm, they have a doctrine. Um, so they're, they're, they're teaching one another here. Um, and it says here, uh, you know, if any man speak in an unknown tongue, let it be by two or the most by three and, and that by course and let one interpret. But if there be no, no interpreter, let him keep silence in the church and let him speak to himself and to God. Let the prophets, so there we go, these are the, the, the preachers in the church, the, the people that are teaching the church, speak two or three and let the other judge. If anything be revealed to another that sitteth by, let the first hold his peace so it's saying here, don't talk, you don't talk over one another. There's order in the church. You let somebody finish before you um, raise your voice and, and say something. For you may all prophesy or teach one by one that all may learn and all may be comforted. And the spirits of the prophets are subject to the prophets. Then it goes on to say in verse 34, let your women keep silence in the churches for it is not permitted unto them to speak. So is it saying there that women just can't say anything at all? during church? No, it's just saying when the teaching is going on, it's not a place for a woman to teach or a woman to raise her voice. It's, it's only the place of the men to teach and to preach the Word of God. Because it goes back to this principle of women being easily deceived, that men are ordained in the house of God to rule and to teach the Word of God in the house of God. Now let's just go over to 1 Timothy 2. So we say that, saw there in 1 Corinthians uh, 14 that women are to keep silence in the churches. And I believe it's saying there that you know, women only uh, should be silent during the teaching and the preaching part of church. And I think that uh, not only, the reason why I believe that is it, it's sort of clarified here in 1 Timothy 2, because it says here, let the woman learn in silence. 
So it's not saying that the woman is just silent all, silent all the time. It's just saying when the learning is happening, let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. But I suffer not a woman to teach, nor to usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. So we see there that it's the learning in silence. It's not that a woman just comes to church and can't say anything at all. Let's just compare that back, the learning in silence, to 1 Corinthians 14. And we see, let your women keep silence in the churches, verse 34, for it is not permitted unto them to speak, but they are commanded to be under obedience, as also saith the law. And look here, and if they will learn anything, so it's the learning, the context is the learning and the teaching and preaching of God's word, let them ask of their husbands at home, for it is a shame for women to speak in the church. So what does that mean? So that means when the preaching is going on, women are meant to be silent. They're not meant to raise their hand and ask questions. So, you know, as ladies here, you know, don't ask questions during the teaching and preaching. I am fine with you asking questions afterwards. Um, I think it's ideal, though, that you ask your husband at home, and it's ideal that the husband knows the answer, you know, uh, and is able to clarify for the wife, and she doesn't need to ask somebody else in church. But some people, you know, don't have a husband that is very knowledgeable on the Word of God, or, you know, maybe they don't have a saved family or don't have a saved husband. That's fine to ask me or any of the people uh, after church and have things clarified but not when we're assembled together uh, as, a, as a church body here. Um, so, you know, don't, obviously, you know, women don't teach. So that's why we'll never have a woman preacher at church. We'll never have a woman teach. Um, you know, women shouldn't ask questions, um, but also women shouldn't voice their opinion during the preaching. So sometimes men will say, amen, or that's right. I believe it's wrong for a woman to do that. It's a wrong for a woman to voice up um, because she's meant to be silent during uh, the preaching. Um, and that's how it is. So what can a woman do? So, you know, I believe that women can, can pray, you know, because that's not the time of teaching. We have a time of prayer. Women can pray. Sometimes we have prayer meetings on weekday nights when we go around the circle and everyone prays and women pray too. I mean, to be honest, I'm fine with women praying even on Sunday mornings. You know, then you might ask, well, Victor, why haven't you ever asked a woman to pray on Sunday mornings? Well, it's because I, I don't know whether you guys would want to pray on Sunday mornings because generally the, uh, the women are a bit, you know, I know that you guys are a bit more shy. If you want to, you know, that's fine. I'm happy to, to have a woman pray on a Sunday morning. I just figured you ladies were a bit more, more shy and uh, would be a bit more, uh, you know, shy on a Sunday morning because there are people that here that you don't know as well and having to pray in public. Um, I know some women feel that way. <laughs> so, you know, that's, that's why I, I just asked the men to do it. It's just logistically a bit easier. I know they're happy to pray and, and I just give it to them. And since we only have uh, one or two people praying, you know, I want somebody to pray in a loud voice that is confident praying for this uh, body here, this church here. So I'm happy with a woman praying. You know, I don't have a problem with a woman praying on Sunday morning. You know, I don't have a problem with women publicly speaking in a non-church gathering. So, for example, if a, if a woman is giving a business lecture or she's teaching a group of women about something to do in the kitchen or teaching a group of women about homeschooling, um, even the Sunday school setting, or like say a women have a, have a, um, uh, like, a, like, a, like a ladies meeting or a ladies afternoon or an afternoon tea, you know, they have their tea parties or whatever, and, and somebody gets up and teaches those ladies the word of God, um, or even in a Sunday school when it's only, you know, little children, it's a purpose, you know, of little children, not everyone's gathered. Why don't I classify those gatherings as church? Well, the reason why I, I classify it that way is because ch I believe church is a gathering of every believer. And if, if some believers are excluded from that gathering, I don't think that's church anymore. So if you say, well, we're going to gather together, but only the men are invited, that's just some men event that you're having that's not church because church is when, hey, everyone comes. Now, if it just happens to be all men, then that's church. But if you've made it a point to say, no, it's only men, it's only women, it's only young couples, it's only married couples, it's only children, well, that's not church anymore. So I wouldn't necessarily condemn like a Sunday school teacher that has a group of kids and she's teaching the Bible stories and things like that and saying, oh, you Jezebel, you're, you're serving authority over a man. I just think that isn't church, you know, because you, 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 adults are not welcome to just come there and, and be there. And, and if adults were part of that gathering, she probably wouldn't be teaching the things she was teaching because that's geared towards children. Um, and you'd probably have a man teach men. So, you know, work, you know, hobbies, ladies meetings, kids clubs, Sunday school teachers. Um, I don't think it's a problem for women to be the speaker there 
or the expert in that field. Um, you know, so, but women, you know, women can make noises. You know, when you say silence in the church, you know, you can, you can laugh and things like that. I mean, that's not, because it's saying, keep silence, saying you don't teach and speak as opposed to, you know, laugh. You know, singing is not the time of teaching. So yeah, women sing uh, in the congregational singing. They, they can sing in church. They can laugh in church. You know, you can make, you can make body noises. You know, like you can make, you know, before you assume what those body noises are, I'm, I'm talking about like coughing and sneezing. You don't have to be like, <coughs> just because you're worried about making a noise in church. So obviously you can make, you know, natural noises. Um, but obviously you don't make those natural noises if you're trying to say something. Like, you know, people will be like, <coughs> or they'll be like, <coughs> so, you know, obviously you don't do that if you're trying to say something with a body noise.